Hey everybody, you know I promised you all that I was going to shoot a video on how to process PRP, so if you ever get into trouble at the office, you can go ahead and watch the video and get through any rough spots. So we're here today, we're going to draw some PRP and show you guys exactly how to process it. Every time I do PRP, I set my field up the same way, so I'm going to show you how I set my field up to start. Um, which makes it a lot easier once you uh, start doing PRP in your office. So the kit for sterile, you just peel, peel open the kit. And the first thing I do is I take out the bottle of anticoagulant, which is sodium citrate, I set it in the back, and I use this as my field. Everything in the small bag is what we're going to need to draw the blood. It has the tourniquet, it has the butterfly needle, it even has the dressing and the band-aid in it. I take one of my 30cc kit, 30cc syringes, and I will fill that with 3 cc's of anticoagulant. That will be the anticoagulant that is in the syringe at the time that we draw the blood. All right, so we've moved into the exam room. Jennifer here is going to uh, draw my blood. We're going to draw, we're using a 30cc kit. Um, so um, with 30, a 30cc kit, we'll get five to six uh, cc's of pure PRP. Um, and I'll explain that as soon as she draws the blood so I don't have to talk while she's sticking me because I tend to talk with my hands and I don't want to move. So she's prepping the area just with an alcohol swab. If you like to use one of the other uh, preps uh, to prep the area, you can go ahead and do that, like Dura Prep. She has a 19 gauge needle that's hooked to the 30cc syringe with the anticoagulant in it, and she's going to go ahead and do the venia puncture. And she is good. Oh my god. You have done this before. There is no doubt. That was one of the best. Actually, I'm not just saying this because we're on camera. That was one of the best sticks I've ever had. I didn't feel a thing. Um, it is a big needle. It's a 19 gauge. The reason that we do it through a big needle. Now, if you have something with small veins and you have to go down to a 21 gauge, you can do that. But if you can draw it through a 19 gauge, you draw the whole 30. If you can do it through a uh, through a 19 gauge, do that. Going through a 21 gauge, sometimes the platelets will break um, as you pull them through the smaller gauge needle. Uh, that will cause your sample to coagulate early, um, so you don't want to get that platelet damage. Um, so you go ahead and try to do the uh, 19 gauge if possible. Um, if not, you could easily go to a 21 gauge. I don't like band-aids. I think that if somebody is at your facility and they are paying anywhere from $1,500 to $3,000 to have procedures done, that you don't give them a band-aid, that you should just hold pressure on it for a minute or so, let the bleeding stop, and then once the bleeding stops, uh, they can go on and um, you know go through the rest of the procedure. But if somebody's paying that kind of cash, they deserve the attention of not having a band-aid stuck in their arm. All right, so we just got my blood drawn, brought it back to the preparation station. Now what we're going to do, so red blood, red cap. So we'll go ahead and take the red cap off. We'll take the red blood. These are Lorlock, so we don't have to worry about any bacteria or anything getting in. And we put the 30 cc's of red blood into the first collection tube. Watch the, sometimes the syringes and the tube don't exactly match, so make sure that you stop at 30. So there is still a tiny little bit of blood left in there. And this is where the second syringe comes in. So we have about three cc's of anticoagulant in here. And what I'm going to do is, if you look real close, you can see there's some blood in that little tube at the top. If we leave that blood in there, two things will happen. One is, is that it can clot. And we go when we go to draw the plasma off, the plasma won't drop draw off. And the second thing is it'll make your uh, PRP a little bloody, it'll make it a little blood tinged. So what I do is I just push a little bit of anticoagulant through until that line clears, and now we know that there's no blood in that line. Now we're set to go ahead and process it in the centrifuge. What I'll do is um, take a so I've got 
using a alcohol swab here. I'm just going to clean the blood off the top of this. The only reason is, is that will keep your centrifuge clean. Um, if we don't, if we have blood on there, sometimes it'll it'll um, go around on the inside of the centrifuge. I'm going to weigh the tube. So the tube is 63 grams. Uh, the reason that we weigh it is that we want to make sure that we put a counterbalance in so that will counterbalance um, within four grams of the weight of the blood. So our counterbalances are back here. It's 62.3, so we are within four grams. We'll put that in as a counterbalance. Close the lid. It says right at the bottom what you need to spin it at, so you don't need to remember it, but the first spin is going to be one minute at 4,200 RPMs. The start button is the center of the time button. We hit go, and then we'll wait one minute, and we'll be right back. At the end of the process, the top will open automatically. I just closed it and opened it. Um, and then what you have now is your red blood cells on the bottom and your plasma on the top. Mine has a significant more, it's usually about 50-50. Mine has a significant more red cells compared to plasma because I'm on testosterone, uh, which will raise uh, your hematocrit and will give you a much uh, lower volume of plasma and PRP. What we do now is we will take one of our other syringes. We'll go back to the top of the lure lock. We'll attach it and we will now pull off all the plasma and you'll be able to watch it go into the syringe and what you're going to watch for and I'll go ahead and pull bring this up when we get to the bottom you're going to go nice and slow what you're going to watch is that tube that's in the middle because as we pull up as soon as we see red blood cells enter that tube we know we need to stop now if we get a little flash of red into the syringe, there's the red blood cells in the tube. So now we know that we have all the plasma. We can unscrew this and there is our plasma. Now, what we'll do is we'll take this and we'll go back into the second collection device. The one that did not have the red top on to start. And we'll go ahead and push our plasma into that tube. Now what we'll do is we'll take that, we'll weigh it. It's at 31 grams. We'll take our second counterbalance. We're at 39. So what we'll need to do is take one of our syringes and pull a little bit of the water off of this. So we can get within four grams. Thirty-one point two. We're going to close this, and we're going to turn the time up to five minutes, forty-two hundred RPMs. Hit the center of the time button to start, and we'll let it spin for five minutes, and we'll see you back then. So a lot of people will ask me how to pick what kit you're using uh, to do the procedure, and with the Pure Spin, we have three options. Um, actually, we have four options. Um, we have a 20 cc single spin kit, which you put the blood in the canister, you spin it one time at 4200 uh, RPMs for just one minute, and that's going to separate your plasma from your red cells. Um, you'll have probably about 10 cc's of plasma. You could take off the first five cc's, discard it, and use the bottom five cc's for procedure. You're going to be up four times the concentration of whole blood, so that's plenty enough to do microneedle into the face. The 30 cc kits are going to give you five to six cc's of really good uh, five to nine times concentration of whole blood PRP, um, which is uh, enough to do an O-shot. It's enough to do a vampire facelift. Um, so you're plenty, you have plenty enough there. The 60 cc kit is going to give you somewhere around 10 to 12 cc's of really highly concentrated PRP. Um, that's going to be enough to do a P-shot. Um, there it opened on its own. You could hear it opening in the back. It does, as soon as it's finished with its cycle, it will open up. So getting back to the 60 cc kit, 10 cc's, 10 to 12 cc's of really pure PRP, enough to do 10 cc's for a P-shot. And then we do have a 120 cc kit. 120 cc kit is going to give you about 25 cc's of highly concentrated PRP. So if you're doing what Dr. Ruddles refers to as the trifecta, either hair, 
face and penis in a man or face, breast, and O shot in a female, um, you'll have enough PRP with a 120cc kit to get all three procedures done. So now that it's finished spinning the second spin, we can go ahead and pull that off. And typically what we would have um, with somebody not on testosterone, we would have about 12 to 15 cc's of plasma. Uh, because, of the, because of the fact that I'm on testosterone, uh, we are right at about six cc's. Uh, what you do at this point is you find out what your provider needs um, as far as, um, as, far as uh, volume for the procedure. Um, if we're using a 3cc kit and the procedure, the uh, physician is doing an O-shot, uh, you would pull um, everything off down to 5cc's, leaving 5cc's in the vial, and that's what you would use for your procedure. Um, what I'm going to do here is because I'm at 6, I'll go ahead and pull this put this on. I'm just going to pull off 1cc uh, to get us down to 5. Uh, there's the 1cc I'm pulling off, and as I said, you're going to pull off all the way down to what you want to use. Now what's in here is the 5cc's that I would want to use for the procedure. I'm going to swirl that. What I'm doing with that is I'm getting the little bit of red cells that were in the vial, um, which is fine, off the bottom, and then any platelets that have adhered to the bottom are going to get resuspended into the solution. And at that point, what I will do is I will take another syringe, um, and I'll just use the one that's in here that has the anticoagulant in it. I'll take this, I will hook this onto the top, and I will pull off the PRP that we're going to use for the procedure. Now, it, you have to tilt it to the side. There's a little crook in the bottom of the, of the uh, container, and that's how you get your PRP. I have a little bit of air in this tube, so I'm going to go ahead and push my air out. Back on and get the remainder of the PRP out of the tube. So there's we have PRP that's now about five to six times concentration of whole blood. Um, this is going to have all your platelets, all your growth factors, all your cytokines uh, for the procedure and should be able to do a good procedure with that. Uh, once again, if you ever have any questions regarding how you process your PRP, um, if you're one of my clients, you know how to give me a call or send me an email. Um, if you're not yet one of my clients and you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to reach me at, at the email address that's attached to my YouTube page. I'd be more than happy to talk to you about PRP and about all aspects of regenerative medicine. Have a great day, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all really soon.